Sorry, if you hear squeaking and my dog needs attention. Draft Brewed Blast, Milwaukee's favorite premium beer. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Bavarians is for your man and you too. Oat Liebs tastes good like a beer should. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. That's right. Welcome in, everybody. Thanks for hanging. Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. I am Greg. Today I'm being joined by Flex Marks the Spot. Hey, a wise man once said, Greg, no matter how bad life gets, there's always beer. Oh, what a wise man indeed. In fact, might be the smartest man I've ever heard. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Cheers to everybody who's new to the show. If you're joining for the first time, grab a beer, come in, listen, all that good stuff. If you've been around for a while, hope you're staying well hydrated. Shout out to our top listening city of last week, and that is Phoenix, Arizona. What up, Phoenix? All the shit. All the shit. I've talked about Phoenix Suns, and they're still listening to the show. Something is clearly, clearly wrong with them. So, uh, hi, Phoenix. Thanks for listening. Sons can still choke on a dick. I agree. And Kevin Johnson will never be in the Hall of Fame. I'm just <laughs> going to put it out there right now. Kevin Johnson never in the Hall of Fame. Anyways, enough about me ranting on the Suns. We'll get some basketball rants in a couple of few. Uh, we are being joined by the commissioner of the Booze League, the one and only, well, the commish. <laughs> <laughs> Not a commish. Not the a commish. commish. The- I'd also like to give a shout out to the Phoenix Suns. Um, hey, you know, if, if you're if you're sad with the unfiltered gentleman bagging on the Suns, come on over to the booze cast where we do nothing <laughs> but stroke the balls of every Suns player to make sure everybody knows how amazing they are. Hey, loving you, Phoenix. Uh, booze cast, uh, boozeleague.com, uh, at booze league. And <laughs> this is why I have editing control whenever he's on. So shameful. <laughs> it'll never make right the light here. of day. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, where are the Suns from again? I don't know. Yeah. Like, I'm just kind of jumping on the bandwagon here. How do you feel about Kevin Johnson? Who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That'll keep all those Suns He's got a good last there. name. It sounds like a penis. So. You're right. Wow. Well, it literally means penis, I believe, in Latin. Johnson means I, oh, oh, yeah. I think that's like Il Johnson, if I remember correctly. Il Johnson Grande? Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, why not? We're just teaching the world some new things here. Uh, Wiley, thanks for uh, for joining us tonight. For hanging hey, thanks out. for inviting me. Uh, good to be here. I'm sorry I opened up with a penis joke, um, <laughs> but I'd like to say I I'm, I'm glad to be back on the Unfiltered Gentleman podcast. And cheers, you guys. You know, I, I think I think penis jokes is how you really connect with people. Um, so well, I just, just want to say I, I feel a connection already. So re- really nice to be on <laughs> with you. It's really not a hard way to connect. And mo- most of you guys probably at home <laughs> at home probably won't hear this, but we spent a good five minutes talking about just the tip before we started recording. So, oh, you know, yeah, we all wrong. bonded yeah. over that kind of uh, idiom. Yeah, so. I mean, it did relate to microphones slightly, but uh, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. But it's always about um, dicks. Right. It is always about dicks. <laughs> That's why we're here. <laughs> um, we have a lot to get to tonight. Of course, we've got our beers we're going to share with you. And while he brought a fancy one, we've got, uh, I've got an apology that I must give to Flex. I'll get to that shortly. Some what? Uh, booze news to get. I know. Flex, let me just start off with I'm sorry. And you'll find out why briefly. But I'm, I I'm intrigued. Sorry. Me too. We'll see how this goes. Uh, but let's kick things off with some hydration. Find out what Wiley's drinking over there. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for beer of the week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend, and I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. What beer are you having yourself? I gotta tell you, that song always gets stuck in my head. <laughs> I think I'll have myself a beer. At least it doesn't get stuck in your craw. It's a great one. Just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, what am I doing tonight? So, um, over the weekend, uh, the local uh, bottle shop, Bottle and Pint, had a Beachwood Ooh, takeover. Place. And there were a number of very, very good beers that they had on tap. One of them, they had a number of sours. It was actually a, um, uh, like a funk it takeover. Like now that everything's open, funk it, come on in was kind of the theme of it. Right on. And so they had a number of the funk, yeah, uh, sour beers from the Beechwood Blendery. And I picked myself up. I didn't try it because I wanted to try it live here with you guys. 
Uh, World exclusive. I got the Funk Yow Boysenberry from Beechwood Blendery. It is 6.5% ABV. No IBUs are listed. Uh, the untapped score that they got going on right now is 4.15. Pretty respectable. Uh, Beechwood wants you to know about this about that beer. It's a Belgian style sour ale, fermented and aged in oak barrels with, spoiler alert, boysenberries. Oh, boysenberry. Totally thought you were going to say cherry. Funk yeah, boysenberry. Let's let's try this out, shall we? Yeah, dig on in there. That it's got a nice color to it, also. It's yeah, look very, at that, like, right? Reddishy, purpley. It looks like a drinking nice. cranberry juice. <laughs> Real nice and deep, like. Let me tell you, it does not taste like cranberry juice. I would hope not. I man, that's only good for vodka and bladder infections. I'm going to say this: this is very well balanced. There, there are a number of different things going on in this beer. I mean, you, you got the sourness of it. Um, you got obviously the 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 fruit kind of taste of it as well. Um, and then you got the oaky bit of it. And the blendery did a really good job of balancing all of those. It's not overly sour. You get a little bit of the oak kind of woodiness of it. Mm. And I am not, a, if you listen to the booze cast, you know I'm not a fan of fruity beers. I'm just not. This true. has a hint of what the taste is that you know it, but it's not overwhelmingly. You don't drink it and go, oh, that's a fruit beer. Um, this is a, not some Ballast Point bullshit. <laughs> no. Well, Ballast Point uh, post uh, sale, basically, right? right. Um, because before there it was okay, but then they started losing their minds and they sold it, and then you know that the, who, who was a constellation right sculpting. lost their minds with it and like hey yeah. fruit everything fuck it let's drop it in. Um, this is actually a very very good beer. Um, I don't know how widely available this beer is. The Funky House series, I mean, I think it's generally available in California. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure I feel like Tavor would probably have it as well. So look up uh, the Beechwood Blendery on Tavor if you could. But um, well balanced. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it because I'm generally not a fruity beer. Like my favorite sour beer is Agrestic by Firestone, which is just a sour red ale. There's no fruit additives to it. There's no extra level of whatever. But I could drink more than one of this, which thank God I got two. <laughs> I'll say this though, like. It's not cheap. Like this is how, how many ounces is this? I mean, it's in a bottle with a cork. I'm guessing like minimum price. Yeah, surprise $22. cork, by the way. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Um, this is Nothing like a surprise cork. All right. So this is I think this is 20 ounces or so. Um, and this cost me twenty two dollars. So there you have it. You're paying for it. Not boozing on a budget tonight. Not boozing on a budget, but I mean, come on, look at that. Funk yeah. It's a pretty bottle. Yeah, it's yeah, good. That's awesome. And a really, really good beer. And that name, that series, oh, it's yeah. classic. Funk, yeah. They have a, they have a Funk, couple different yeah. ones. Uh, they have uh, an apricot version of this. Uh, I'll, I'll look up the other. There's like three or four other ones that were all on tap that night at Beachwood. It was a really good night. I met uh, the Beachwood rep. Uh, the stone rep, Adam, was in the house, which, by the way, that rep is the only man I know that could give Dan beard envy. It is, <laughs> it is a beard. Like, I mean, I swear to God, I thought I could reach in there and pull a beer out of it. Like it was so thick and amazing. <laughs> Probably could. <laughs> Does it grow up to his eye sockets? Like, <laughs> is, is it that good? No, but it, it looks like it could if he let it, but he's got it under control because he's an alpha it purposely doesn't. when it comes to his beard. That beard right. follows his commands. Like it is, <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> So, um, yeah, then the brewers from uh, um, 14 Cannons were there as well. Like, it was a, actually a really good night. Nice. It kind of felt like normal again. It was the first Friday after everything here in California opened up. And yeah. it was actually very good. So well, it's, it's funny you say that. First of all, I have to openly admit, I've, I've never had anything from Beachwood Blendery. I've had some Beachwood beers, but none of their, their funky sour. This, is, the, this like is like, until Friday, I had not either. And I recommend it. They do it like I'm not far behind. They do a good job on on the sour stuff. If you see a blendery out there, it's well worth getting. And and on to that point of of things opening and feeling normal, we went to uh, 14 Cannons over the. We went to a couple of breweries. We went to 14 Cannons over the weekend, and it was the first establishment that my wife and I sat inside to enjoy libations at since the Rona started back in March of last year. So did you over go maskless, a year, like no fucks nope, given, yeah, we, like no mask. You're right. How weird did you feel doing that? It felt well. The funny thing is, like, we still brought our mask because we don't know. Like, what if we get up there and the door says like you need your mask or something? <laughs> so we had it in our pockets and we opened the door and didn't say anything on the door. Like, all right, that's a good sign. So we open the door. We look in. Like, okay, not one fucking person has a mask on. So I guess 
we are okay. So we walked up to the bar and, and order, then we sat down inside, and it was, it was like, whoa, this is weird. We got the people watch and talk shit about people. It had been well over a year for that kind of stuff happening. How, how amazing did that feel? That That's just the best. The people watching, oh the shit God. talking. It, well, so, and, and it's what I live for. Yeah, and Wiley brought up Nick, the, the brewer from uh, from 14 Cannons. We talked to him for a little bit. He was there. I was like, hey, it's so good to see you from the nose down. I haven't, haven't <laughs> seen you there in a year or so. So we hung out. We talked a little beer and, and tried a couple of his newer ones. And uh, it was great. And then uh, on Sunday, yeah, Father's Day, before doing Father's Day activities, we went over to Integrin, sat inside again because the outside was way, you know super crowded. So we just sat inside. It was nice and cool. Had a couple beers inside. I was like, man, this is... This is nice. Things are starting to return to a little bit. In the How world. weird is it? Because I've been going to a number of breweries during like, you know, as things start about open back up and you kind of go in, everybody's masked up and whatnot. How weird is it to see people without masks? You're like, holy shit, you have a beard? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, especially walking around too. Cause like you're so, anytime anybody gets up, like you have to wear a mask and somebody gets up to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Like, ha- oh, never mind. You're fine. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not judging. You're fine. Well, I was talking to one of the beer tenders at Integran, and, and we went to school together. And I was like, "Hey, how are you?" She's like, "Great." And I was like, "Hey, it's so great to see you from you know nose down." She's like, "Oh my god, I can't tell you how nice it is to be able to see people's lips when they talk because I can't fucking hear anything in here." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Yeah, I bet that's true. I bet that's true. I don't have to deal Dude, with loud." Not only that, but work. just seeing smiling faces again. Hundred like, percent on people that. People are you know actually happy outside in the world as opposed to just see, you know. Seeing over everybody with a mask on, and you know they're just not doing well. You know nobody right. liked that. Nobody enjoyed it. Uh, so yeah, just seeing people enjoying life again, it just makes you happier as a person. Well, that mask yeah. was a constant reminder of everything that's going on. You're literally wearing the the current time on your face, and you can't get away <laughs> from it. It's like, god damn it! And now you're like, now you lose the mask, and everyone's smiling and talking to each other, like you said. And now it's like it's a reminder that hey, we're done with that. Hey, what's up? Yeah. I can see your face and like we're interacting and <laughs> how's it going? And uh, what uh, have you seen the latest Loki? Are we binge watching? What do you do? Like, this, <laughs> you know, Hey-o. there's a lot going on, right? Isn't Owen Wilson in that? What the fuck is oh, that? I like dude, the it's sound good, of that. Though. It's good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so I'm, good. Yeah. Loki's so like, I'm, I'm in for that. I'm, I'm really happy with what the MCU is doing with their, um, with the Disney plus shows yeah. they've released Wiley, so far. I don't know if you, I don't know if you could tell. I, I, I kind of saw uh, that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a little bit of a nut job with my wall and all things Marvel. So uh, Flex is quite the fan. I, I would call that aficionado, yeah. not a nut job. Just you know, <laughs> ah, <nerd>. enthusiast. <laughs> I'm super okay with the the nerd title. Enthusiast, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the problems I had with the mask was like I have a fairly dry sense of humor. I was always afraid like I'd crack some joke and you couldn't see my smile, and people were like, man, that guy's just a fucking dick. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> Fuck yeah, that this guy. guy. Well, yeah. Finally, people can see you for who you really are. Still a dick. Still a dick. Yeah. Least, Still a dick. Yeah. Yeah, not, a, not a lot changed. But, um, but yeah, you know, speaking of me being a dick, I, I have to apologize to you, Flex. Uh, last year, I, every... I don't even know what you're talking about, by the way. <laughs> you you re- will as re- soon as I'm, I get into this. I am rendered speechless for you to apologize <laughs> to me. I'm a neutral well, party in this and just going to observe. Yeah, so. you, could, you, could, you could pass judgment on us. Uh, Every week after the uh, show comes out, I post a, a post on the gram that says, you know, hey, new show, and this is what we talk about. Check it out, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I always tag who's on the show and the beers we had and all this stuff. Well, I forgot to finish tagging Flex at oh, Flex Jesus. New Beer. Jesus. And he, he pointed out to me. Because I just tagged at flex, no underscores, nothing else. And uh, apparently that takes you to a feminine hygiene product <laughs> company. <laughs> Which, you know, if you're in the market for some of those things, at flex on the gram might be where to go. Apparently they sell their stuff in CVS. It's all over their I brand. have heard that flex is very fresh. So <laughs> yeah. hit, hit yeah. that double tap if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yes, my apologies. I, I I talked about you in the post and then tagged some uh, some things that don't apply to your lifestyle. If you got to pat out the show, <laughs> Flex is the guy you go to. Yeah, <laughs> he's very absorbent when it comes to knowledge. All right, apology accepted, uh, and we can move on. <laughs> you sure you don't want me to keep going on this for another five to no, ten? On the whole, he's very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just gonna sit, sit back with my arms crossed now until uh, <laughs> until, until you guys are done. Subject. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fine. We'll move on. We'll. In fact, we'll let you rant a little bit. Flex. Watch any basketball this weekend? So I I did watch a little basketball <laughs> this weekend. And if anybody's curious, I am from Milwaukee, and the Milwaukee Bucks have now clinched a spot in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yep. And they're playing the five seed thanks to the Philadelphia 76ers head coach, known for blowing big games oh, in the I'm playoffs. Glad, I'm glad you finished that sentence that way. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Rivers, Greg, I know how, how the, the, disdain, the disdain you have for this man yes. goes far beyond what I could even imagine. And it I runs just wanna, deep. I just want to thank him for for blowing another big game seven as the number one seed, losing to the five seed Atlanta Hawks, and giving the Milwaukee Bucks a little upper hand on finally reaching an NBA Finals. Giving him a little bit of a bye week. Uh, you know we're not gonna get ahead of ourselves. No, now. the Hawks are a good um, team. You know, but I mean they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, so they are good. But yeah, uh, I will say as of this moment, as we record Monday night, June twenty first. The four teams left in the NBA playoffs, the Clippers, the Suns, the Hawks, and the Milwaukee Bucks. And if you ask me who I'm rooting for, I'm going for the Bucks. God, I, I love you so much. Just saying. Clippers and Suns can suck a big fat one. I'm going to say Booze Clippers. League's on the, on the side of uh, your uh, biggest listening uh, audience last week, the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Booze League has the Suns. Just reel them in, Wiley. Reel them in. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, maybe we need to get some sort of like uh friendly gentleman's bet if you will uh you take the suns we'll take the bucks now we just need to think of some sort of punishment i like that i like that idea you know we're always down for the uh for the punishments and the uh the awards here on the booze league so i'm in let's think about that and i'm down yeah let's let's think about that and let's uh let's confer and then maybe figure something out i will say one of the best ones i i ever had to do I did a bet, a Super Bowl bet with a buddy once, and the loser had to chug. You give him the day, not full 24 hours, but like, you know, normal daylight hours to chug a, uh, I think it was like a 36 or 48 pack of Bud Light. <laughs> Jesus. Holy shit. <laughs> Poor guy. I died. Yeah, that was me. That's a lot of beer. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if I want to do that much, especially if it's such a shitty beer, but. Uh, and by like number 28, he's like, I'm going to start a podcast called The Unfiltered Gentleman. <laughs> 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 no, it was an even worse podcast than that. Um, <laughs> It was one we used to do that involved sports, sort of sports. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, t- I'm totally, in, I'm totally in for this bet. Yeah, yeah let's, I'm let's definitely think in. about this. Definitely, let's, in. let's put our heads together after the show and think about this. Because I'm, uh, I'm horrible at bets. By the way, um, I made one for my past fantasy football season, and okay. I now have to draft in my underpants this new season. I don't see anybody uh, losing with that one. Yeah, I mean, well, are, are no, you getting? I, you have to draft like a Buffalo Wild Wings in your underpants because that's what I'm talking well, about. No, it's just it's just <laughs> in my brother in law's backyard, you know. But uh, still, pretty yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah, you know, p- people are going to be there, but I got nothing to hide. You know, I, I mean, I've I've seen your gram. I don't think anybody loses with you walking around in your underwear. <laughs> He's like, oh no, I have to take my shirt off again. Oh, <laughs> again, <laughs> terrible. Oh, darn. Somebody know where the weight room is? <laughs> The beach is that way. <laughs> well, I like this. I like this. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. down for that. And and let's start thinking ahead now because we're all we're in what June, so August is right around the corner when fantasy football starts up. And booze league and unfiltered gentlemen have a long standing competition, a storied rivalry, a storied rivalry when it comes to fantasy football. So let's start thinking about some back and forths on that. Yeah. Right. I like it. I like it. I'm I just down, want I'm you down. to make sure that Scott drafts every team, if you could. That would be, uh, <laughs> we'd really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, he'll draft every team for the Booze League. It'll oh, be son of a. Oh. Yeah, we're in. The way Scott reviews beers, I can only imagine how he drafts a fantasy football team. <laughs> oh. Same. <laughs> yeah. I'd say he's better at the beer part. I'll leave it there. Uh, all right, before we move on, let's uh, let's find out what Senior uh, Naked fantasy person is drinking over there that was a horrible introduction my apologies <laughs> super good one. you'll get it you'll hit. get good at it at some point it's fine yeah <laughs> let me only hit like 300 i'm just gonna hit some music and shut up <laughs> what is you drinking over there well today i am drinking 
Uh, Eagle Park Brewing Company's Flavor Town. Mm. Yeah. Hey, um, this is a, as Untapped calls it, Flavor Town is a New England IPA packed with heaps of citra and mosaic hops to give this beer piquant aromas of tropical fruit, pine, and citrus. Yeah. You like that, Greg? You almost I'm spit sorry. your drink out. I, I did. What was that word again? Piquant. I've never had that fruit. Okay. <laughs> is that something you can get from the Atflex <laughs> Gram account? No, you only get it at Whole Foods. <laughs> I believe it Piquant. is a guy... A guy, Fieri word. Hey. Um, okay. Fieri. Because I'm an asshole. Yes, you um, are. So it says uh, tropical fruit, pine, and citrus. On the nose, this sucker is definitely full of that tropical goodness. Mm. Um, real nice and hazy appearance. It actually kind of almost looks like uh, liquid gold, actually. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty sexy looking beer. Real nice soapy lacing on there, too. Holy shit, you see that? Some good lacing. <laughs> it's outstanding. So we throw that on the old uh, old tongue jobber. <laughs> I think well, I knew her. That, Was man. that Misty? Yeah. <laughs> she works on uh, 141st and uh, Sequoia. Yeah, she's crazy. Oh, she switched corners? <laughs> yeah, she is. I mean, they're, they're not pimp. lying on this. Disc- <laughs> <laughs> poor Flex. Uh, sorry, dude. Uh, poor me. Sorry. <laughs> They are not lying on this description. Uh, I mean, these flavors literally go tropical, a real small hint of pine, but you get it, and then that citrus finish on the back end, super, super creamy, soft mouthfeel. Overall, it has a 4.19 on untapped on uh, 1,500 check-ins. Pretty good. Pretty damn good. Uh, 8% ABV. This is a real banger of a beer, man. Take me to Flavor (laughs) Town. I wonder what the mayor of Flavortown has to say about this. Now, what are you going to get? You're going to get big, bold taste and some funky flavors. Oh, did you get any funky flavors in there? Nothing funky, just all <laughs> deliciousness and piquant aromas. <laughs> well, anything's funky if you have frosted tips and a fire shirt. Anything's <laughs> funky. I mean, it literally, you could just call anything funky. And enough jewelry to weigh down your hands. Yeah. Right? What a look. Hey, it's a look. I got a lot of respect for the Fieri changed. man. I got a lot of respect for it. that guy. He yeah. owns it. Yeah. Good for him. Good for him. You guys did a little like spotlight on him recently on the booth. Yeah, we thing. did. And there were a lot of uh, facts that you would not have expected. You're like, okay, it's Guy Fieri. You know, he's out there with his frosted tips and his fire shirts and his little. And his weenie he's wagon. He's doing his super duper weenie wagon. Like he's just doing his thing, right? Um, and we learned a number of facts because I actually, here, I'm going to pull it up. I actually learned a fact, and then it led into a whole segment on this guy because I was so intrigued by this fact. But uh, so the Food Network is paying Guy Fieri eighty million dollars over three years. Holy shit! Wow. At twenty six point six million dollars annually, Fieri would be the fifteenth highest paid player in the NFL. I was going to say yeah. he's like a top five quarterback. Yeah. So, uh, just to give you a list of, I'm going to start at the. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to. I'm going to get. I'm going to get to the, la- the the big one last. Um, but it's more than these guys: Amari Cooper, Jalen Ramsey, Odell Beckham, Julio Jones, Aaron Donald, Khalil Mack, and Tom Brady. <laughs> Damn. Guy Fieri's making more than Tom Brady yearly. So you know, suck on that flavor town. <laughs> <laughs> Bring those championships back to Flavortown. Yeah, I know. Uh, there were a number of uh, interesting facts about Guy Fieri. Like the fact is, his full name is Guy Ramsey. I guess if your name's Ramsey, you go into cooking. Uh, Guy Ramsey Fieri. And then he, he changed it to Fieri after his grandfather. Um, the frosted tips were an accident. Well, not an accident. Were unexpected. His his hairdresser did them. And he's like, well, when are you going to wash the shampoo out? She's like, no, that's, <laughs> that's your new hairstyle. Like, it's your, that's your color. He's like, oh, okay. And then he got on uh, the Food Network in, what, 2003, I think, uh, next food, food Network star. And now that he has them, he can't get rid of them because that's it's kind of known Ouch. by that. So If I came home with frosted tips, I'd tell my wife they're in an accident, too. <laughs> you know, Maybe actually, you thought it looked good, right? <laughs> I don't know if it's around all MLB stadiums, but Milwaukee in general, they came out with these brewer bucket hats. 
but the top was cut out, and they had these frosted tip wig oh. on the top, and you look just like Guy Fieri. <laughs> I had one of those hats. Oh, my God. So <laughs> whenever we go up to the lake, you know, it's it's crazy hot. I have extremely short hair, almost none, and you got to wear a hat up there, otherwise you burn the shit out of your, your scalp and your face, and I forgot my hat one year. We stopped at their little like convenience store that's out in the middle of nowhere. And the only hat they had that would fit my big ass head was one of those like it's a visor but with like the fake Guy Fieri hair. <laughs> you're not near the did, top. Did they check your ID? Because you're not old enough to wear one of those hats, bro. That's I didn't want it. it that's was just in the, the mid sixties that you pull one of those out, dude. <laughs> well, so I, I buy it for the trip, and as soon as we get home, my wife's like, "You know, you can never wear that again." And I was like, <laughs> "No, I'll, just, I'll throw it. I'll throw it in the lake bag. It'll be like my emergency yeah, no. lake hat. Nope. You know." I don't care if it gets wet or falls off the boat, like whatever. And she's like, no. Yeah, that's a class I don't give itself, a dude. That's Yeah, she's like, that was the one and only time you're wearing it. It's like the last day of high school and you hold a book burning. You get home from the lake, you fucking have a bonfire <laughs> with that hat. I mean, that- R.I.P. Fieti hair. <laughs> there, there, yeah. There's no, other, there's no other explanation. That's what you do. No, it, it's, gotta, it's yeah. just got to go away. It's got to go it's away. basically what I did. She made me throw it away. R.I.P. hat. Now, I will say this. Part of my affection for Guy Fieri is the fact that he had, and it's gone out of business now, but he had Wasabi Cowboy, mm. a restaurant right literally a block from Russian River. When I was able to get up there and try the Elder and all that stuff, and I walked down and had lunch just uh, like a block away uh, from Guy uh, Fieri's restaurant is Russian River. And Wasabi Cowboy is a mix between like Asian and like barbecue, I guess. Okay. Uh, it was pretty good. I remember I sent a lot of uh, pictures out to uh, people going, dude, I'm in Flavortown. Dude, I'm in Flavortown. Check out on Flavortown. Like, I was really proud <laughs> at the time. This is back like 2014, I think. Um, and then all the, uh, the, the restroom doors were like the swinging doors. So you can kind of see just what's going on inside because it's oh, a cowboy like in a saloon thing. That, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Wow, I mean, you know. Wow, wow. So, you feel like uh, John Wayne every time you take a piss. Yeah, I walked in. <laughs> it's like I walked in with a purpose. Like I, that's you right. Walked in that bathroom yeah. and hey, little pilgrim. And as as you should, <laughs> as you should. Yeah. yeah so, uh, anyways, but th- those are my Guy Fieri uh, facts and notes. But yeah, nice, very nice. I like it. Any rock star energy drink fans here? I've gotten off the rock star. I've gone to Monster. Mm. Mm. I'll get them when they're a buck, but that's about it. Otherwise. <laughs> I'm a bang, bang for life. Yeah, I was on Rockstars for a hot minute, like circa 2002. Uh, I got tired of Red Bull and I went to Rockstar. Damn, they've well, been anyways, around that long. Holy crap. Yeah, I was drinking them in high school. That's crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah. I guess they have. That's crazy. Yeah, they not as long as uh, Red Bull. I remember Red Bull coming out in like junior high, like late Yeah, it's been around forever. 90s. I think I was probably yeah, late, already graduated college sure. by that point. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you a funny story. I had no idea what Red Bull was when it came out. I was in like sixth or seventh grade. And my brother got a free one down at the local Walgreens because the rep was giving him away. To children. That's that's great. Yeah. So I thought it was something that was like really bad for you, like tobacco or alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so I took it out of the fridge when my brother wasn't looking and I dumped it down the sink and he got super fucking pissed. Like super pissed. You and I was dick. like, I, and I thought I was doing like the right thing. And now I, I'm addicted you to caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> dude i had to you were doing the right thing. i had to go down to brazil uh for business 2013 i think humble brag yeah rough life this goes back to this is just the reason i say that is it's so far removed from where we are right and we're out in the middle of the amazon and we go out to like a lunch because we had to go tour a factory or some shit and the the rep we were dealing with was like uh do you like a uh, garana i'm like i'm um, sorry what Got or not? You like got or not? Like got or not? Like, I'm like, um, uh, I don't know. I, I, sure, I'll try it. So it came out. I took a sip. Tastes just like Red Bull. I'm like, oh, Garana. How about? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Turns out I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time. I'm like, sure, yeah, I'll take a, a Red Bull tasting soda that isn't Red Bull. Sure, yeah, you right. know, apparently it's a big Dang. thing down there. I don't know. So got or not? Whenever I see Red Bull, I'm like, hey, got or not? <laughs> it sounds just like gonorrhea. <laughs> um, luckily i didn't get it maybe i didn't have enough i don't know <laughs> keep drinking <laughs> well rockstar uh owned by pepsi pepsi has registered rockstar in the alcohol fruit cocktails drinks alcohol ma- malt beverages and accept beers category well, at least they're specific <laughs> right which basically means there's going to be a rockstar hard seltzer okay mm. well at this point in life i mean who's not coming out with the hard seltzer that's true i 
I think this is kind of geared towards all the White Claw fans, all the bros out there drinking the claw. Now you can now you can get fucked up and kill your heart at the same time. You know, yeah, because it's gonna it's gonna have caffeine, right? Oh, it's got it. I mean, it, it, it would be stupid. It'd be like or got four, it out. It, it's good. <laughs> got yeah, it out. <laughs> It's going to be like four Locos mistakes all over again. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be like the end of a Scooby-Doo episode where they pull off the uh, the mask of the rock star like hard, hard seltzer and it's like four Loco. You're like, oh, I knew it the whole time. <laughs> Probably will be. <laughs> That's why I don't uh, remember anything the last three days. <laughs> right. Wait, what? Oh, I'm sorry, month? What? Where am I? I don't know. <laughs> how did I get to... Just got it out. It was great. How did I get to France? <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so that's something I don't need to uh, run to the store for. Uh, all right, before we get any further, I, I'm really thirsty over here. I'm going to make a call of a pen. He calls to the bullpen for beer. That is right. I am drinking Frothy Beard Brewing's Mikey. And this comes to me from my favorite person on all of the gram. Hi, Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Brewbug SC, go give her a follow. Uh, this is from their anniversary. She sent me all the Ninja Turtle beers they did for their anniversary. This is Mikey. 5% has a 371 on untapped. And a very, very long description. IPA with Meridian Hops and Apricot. Or as some people say, Apricot. Who says I that? I do say Apricot. Do you? I say Are you that Apricot, guy? Yeah. Is that a Milwaukee thing? I, Midwest, maybe? Maybe? All right. Wait, what do you what do you say for uh, like uh, like a Coke or like so? Do you, do you say pop? It's 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 soda here. It's soda. Okay. All okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, thank Sorry. God, that pop thing kills me. <laughs> I think that's a Boston thing, though, right? Pap. No. Um. Funny story. So I went down to help out at a, a grocery store down in Illinois. I had no idea what the fuck was going on there because they had so much help. And I go to the guy who's running everything, and I was like, "Hey, what do you need me to do?" He goes, "Oh, go out and check the pop cooler and see if it needs <laughs> filling." And I'm thinking, pop cooler? Damn, is this like some new state-of-the-art like <laughs> pop-up cooler? Like This sounds fucking awesome. So I literally walk around the entire goddamn store, and I see nothing of the sorts. And I find the guy, and I'm like, hey, what do you need me to do? And he's like, oh, I need you to fill like, the, the pop cooler, like the Pepsi and the Coke. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you need me to fill the soda for you. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Stupid pop. Stupid. Stupid. Pop. So stupid. Dumb. Fucking stupid. Hey, shout out to everybody that uh, calls soda pop. <laughs> that was an under gentleman. <laughs> Tweet at us. Let us know how angry you are. Sorry, Greg. Great, how- gr- grade A heel. <laughs> how, does, uh, how does Mikey taste, Greg? Sorry. Sorry to go off on tangent. <laughs> that sounds dirty, but Mikey is delicious. Uh, <laughs> it is a very smooth, very easy to drink IPA. I was a little worried as uh, the commission over here. Not a huge fan of fruit in my beers, especially when it's not a sour. I, I like a good fruited sour, but a fruited IPA, not my jam. But this has apricot in it and or apricot, and uh, it is not bad. It actually kind of adds to the hot flavor, enhances it a little bit. It's a very light apricot. You get it on the nose. You kind of it's it's what hits you first on the uh, what, what do we call the tongue earlier? The tongue jabber. Yeah, the tongue jobber. That's it. Yeah, yeah the, the tongue, tongue jobber. jobber. Yeah, yeah. On the tongue jobber, you get that first. Finishes up uh, a little bitter, a little bit of that pine. Very little though, because it's more of a, a, a hazy IPA. But really, it's just a really clean, really crushable IPA, and at five percent, goes down super easy. So I was like my prom date. Mm, she was five percent. <laughs> that too. <laughs> She's five feet, but you know, she had a short uh, temper. <laughs> oh, Luckily, most of my jokes went over her head. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> she's gonna, she's gonna How long did you work on the Jungle Cruise for? Tip your waitress. <laughs> yeah. Try the veal. <laughs> He'll be here all week. Uh, and thanks again to Wendy for sending these over. These these have been phenomenal. Love me some Wendy. All right. Old Timmy of the Week. This isn't too far from Tongue Jobber. Uh, <laughs> Thingam Bob. Oh. Thingam Bob. Thing- it's, it's just a, like a thing, right? Well, it's a vulgar address or nomination to any person whose name is unknown. So it's it's essentially calling someone out, you know, hey, Mr. Whatchamacallit. But you said like vulgar. Yeah, it, it's not nice. It's not a nice way to address someone whose name so you don't like, know. So it's like if somebody's like a dick? Well, it's funny you should say that because the second definition for it is testicles. Yeah, thingamabob, right? 
Yeah, well, close. Yeah, thing thingamabobs. Thingam- yeah, that's what I'm okay. thinking. Thingamabobs. Because if it's her testicles, you don't want to call it a thingamabob. Because then <laughs> didn't Ariel sing about that in The Little Mermaid? <laughs> I feel I like that came up. <laughs> it sounds like Look something she was singing about. And yeah. these thingamabobs. <laughs> that movie in itself is super weird. A 16 year old runs away from home and gets married. Let's not talk about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no. That's Walt yeah. Disney was on some shit, man. I think it was made by the Mormons. Any Mormons in the house? Wow. No, sorry. <laughs> shout out to the Mormons. <laughs> Got real quiet. <laughs> but if you are Mormon, shout out to the Booze League. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, you can come over to the Booze Cast. We talk about Mormon yeah. shit, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a feeling they were listening to a beer podcast. I could be wrong. <laughs> you could be, but, right? Uh, yeah. No, they listen to uh, it in like in their rooms late at night with the, the, the covers over their head. And they're like, oh, we got to yeah. listen to the craft beer podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hope to try it someday. <laughs> Uh, have any of you guys been to Denver before? I have not. Fresh out of Denver trips. <laughs> Want to, to but that. have not. I've been the only place I've been in Colorado is Colorado Springs. Oh, okay. So, Love me some Colorado Springs. Yeah. Got some family out there. Uh, always try to check out Denver when I'm in the Springs. I'll try and make it a split trip. Split trip. Words are hard because uh, they got some great beer. But I'm sorry to announce, and this came from our buddy Davis who lives out there. Uh, that Denver's Falling Rock Tap House is going to close their doors forever on June 27th after being in business for 24 years. Anybody who's been to Denver has probably been to Falling Rock Tap House. Last time I was there, we went to a, a Rockies game. It's right across the street from the stadium. Went to the game, then afterwards went to Falling Rock. And I walked in there thinking like, yeah, there's going to be some good beer. We've been there a few times. going to be good beer on tap. I walk in there like, oh, yeah, Pliny. <laughs> or uh, blind pig they had all this stuff that like in california and this is a few years ago before they started producing more of it in california you, you can't get that easily but it's like oh hey we're in denver i can get some great california beer so they've always had great shit on tap and uh sorry to see them go r.i.p falling rock well tell davis uh to go over there and tell him to not close okay just tell <laughs> I'll him to knock, him over. knock that shit off <laughs> yeah okay? davis you're on assignment no. come on buddy yeah let's have a little help davis a little help yeah please one last time uh, Dust Bowl Brewing announces their third tap room location in Elk Grove, California. Not a huge story, I know, especially people outside of Northern California. But uh, Erica is going to be very happy that she's going to have a, a Dust Bowl tap room near her. Do you guys do some extra drinking during the pandemic? Yes. Um, I I bought way more beer during the pandemic than I did pre-pandemic. Okay. I felt like I Why? just kind of carried on with my normal activities. <laughs> <laughs> just without having to go to work. <laughs> just par for the course. Just, you know, I, I called it Tuesday for the past uh, 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you are uh, among the 60 percenters here. Contrary to popular belief, beer consumption did not increase during the pandemic. According to this survey, 60% of people say they stayed the same. 20% says they drank more and the other 20% says they drank less. So, uh, I feel like that's some bullshit. Out. I feel like people are kind of self-correcting on that, going kind of embarrassed about the fact they drank more at home, and they're like, "Who's going to check when they when they fill that out?" I I kind of feel like they, yeah, no, I I don't buy that. Um, anyone listening to this right now, if you're on Facebook, your Facebook feed was full of people talking about how like memes and how much they're 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 doing happy hours on zoom and like people are drinking more and then you you get the memes about oh well now i'm stuck at home with my family i definitely need a beer i really feel that people actually did drink more but i feel like you're answering that and you're like when you when you get a survey like that you're going to write in the best version of yourself <laughs> you're right. as opposed to the Correct. true so i i don't i don't necessarily buy that data but you know I, you know, if they asked Scott, I would believe that he'd stayed the same. But uh, I'd say I drank a little bit more during the pandemic. And I'm, I'm going to co-sign with both of you. Um, but also on the fact that people are always embarrassed to admit that they drink by themselves yep. at home. 100% on that one. You know? 100%. And my, my, you know, my dad, for example, is one of them. He goes, oh, I, you know, I just can't do it to myself to, to have a couple drinks or, you know, get a little buzzed at home by myself. It just doesn't feel right. And I'm thinking to myself, no. It feels more than right. Um, it's <laughs> probably the best feeling ever uh, to just take the edge off. And I think during all that stress, um, you know, especially for everybody who still had to go to their workplace, you know, all the essential yeah. workers. Yeah. There's no fucking way they weren't drinking more, you know, because I, I know I was, especially with my wife being off of work for, you know, 
12 <laughs> weeks, you know, so it's just 12 straight weeks of wife and kids <laughs> and wife and work and kids. Right, right. And back to the wife. Uh, <laughs> and our top listening person of last week was Flex's <laughs> wife. Is you know, she living so, in Phoenix I mean, now? What's up? <laughs> And I'm Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> well, like and I don't Rivers like fan, for yeah. me during the pandemic, you know, it's just me and, and the booze hound Darby here, right? So especially early pandemic, like I'd wander around the house. I'd go in the office a couple times a week, but mainly I was working from home. And I'd wa- I'd literally stare out my window for like 10, 15 minutes, be like, all right, well, now what? You know? I, I ended up for those gamers at home, I ended up finishing the Witcher um Wild Hunt twice. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what you just said. Oh yeah, that's fine. No, I, people, I know that I know that game goes on forever. Oh, and it's that's so all good I know too. About it's that so game. good. But what ended up happening for me is tradition started. So I, I, the tradition was at a certain time, uh, starting about May to like say mid July, I'd have some shadow in my front yard. I put out my, put out my. I literally did it today before I, I hopped on today. It's become now a tradition all the time. Um, put out a camp chair and have a beer and and blast the music from my house and i'd sit out there every afternoon for like an hour and sip and take in the day and then when the sun went down i'd sit in a certain place and and it's funny like uh francesca sicilian beer kitten would come over Mm -hmm. a few times and we sit and we drink whiskey on my front porch as the sun went down like we started having these traditions that meant you had to drink and and (laughs) it just became part of your every day and then it just then it became not something different it just became something you did and yeah. I feel like I can't be the only one that went down that road, you know? So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do so much like extra day drinking. Like I was, you know, even though I was working, well, from you had home, Mrs. Like, Tug that can distract you. Well, I had literally no one but Darby <laughs> who's just like sit there wanting a treat. So, I mean, that can be distracting. <laughs> True. But like, I, I didn't like, Hey, it's three o'clock. I got two hours left on the clock. Let's start drinking. I didn't do anything like that, but there was definitely, you know, a shorter commute to my fridge. That's for sure. Definitely get a couple. No of, traffic. You know, yeah, the traffic jam was was pretty open there. Uh, no big deal. The interchange going downstairs wasn't too bad. So uh, I got you know another beer in that way. And and the weekends like, well, I'm not driving anywhere. Might as well just start drinking now. Yeah, well, ten a.m. Sure. Can't get a DUI sitting at home. So exactly. Though, uh, ask Coley, your co-host Coley. <laughs> Apparently, you can still get a DUI in a pandemic and end up with half a car on a roof. <laughs> yeah, that was an amazing video. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, for me, you know, it was just like the earlier hours, you know, mm. working in a, a grocery retail chain and having, uh, you know, you're just easily, you know, 30 to 50% busier than you were on a normal day, you know, so having to get in early meant you get in, or you get out earlier, uh, so then like 12 p.m., 1 p.m., I'd be at home, and I'm like, well, I've been up since 3 a.m., so it's basically five o'clock somewhere <laughs> and uh you know you just you just crack one so i used to do the morning shift and we get to work at 5 a.m and uh by you know like 8 30 when we had our break we'd go down the street and like ask for salads which i'm sure looked really weird at 8 30 in the morning like getting salads and sandwiches for yeah. to us it was lunch <laughs> so I, I can only imagine that when you get off work at like 2 or 3 p.m it's like yeah i'm ready to crack open a beer i don't care what everyone else is doing that's absolutely how i felt that's my excuse. Yeah. You <laughs> started early. You started from the bottom. Now we're here. No, whoa, whoa, you don't know. This is like eight o'clock at night for me. Um, you know. Right. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're not open for lunch yet? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll come back around. <laughs> Anybody been to Massachusetts? Did any drinking there? Not today. Fresh out of Massachusetts <laughs> visits. Uh. Same. I, I have never been. Uh, but apparently it's where we all need to start going because Massachusetts prosecutors are going to stop using the breathalyzer tests in drunk driving cases. Okay. What are they going to do? Like uh, recite these Elton John lyrics? <laughs> yeah. But, 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 Benny, <laughs> if you don't get the right amount of buzz, you, you get arrested. <laughs> I'm sorry. We were looking for a C sharp and you were, you were more of like a D, <laughs> like, you know, D flat, like, you know. Uh, God damn it. I'm tone deaf. <laughs> So what are they going to do? Just like the uh, the straight line and the I, alphabet I, backwards? Yeah, other tests, I guess. I, they're having issues certifying their uh, their calibration as well as their users. So they're just going to stop using them for, for drunk driving. That's weird. All right. Yeah. I'm, I can't tell I'm if I'm moving to Massachusetts. Yeah. I can't tell if Massachusetts is really ahead of the curve or really dumb. 
Yeah, it's not, it's one or the other there, right? I mean, because you can move there, but you're going to be able to do them. Like, I couldn't do the alphabet backwards, you know? Uh, and like, no. there was actually, um, Sancho talked about this on the, uh, the booze cast about there was a couple of cops that came into where he was having dinner at a Mexican restaurant one night mm. to raise awareness. They were doing uh, tests on oh, people to, to see how drunk they were. And, you know, so they do the thing where, you know, you follow the, the they put their finger in front of your face and then you, you have to follow it. Right. They're not looking to see if you can do it. They can see how far you can do it. And they know by how far your <clears> eyes go, <throat> what your AB, what your ABC is or how, AC, ABC, huh? whatever the fuck it is, uh, your blood alcohol level, your BAC, BAC. Uh, it, was the, it was the right, uh, right letters, just in the wrong order. What are you going to do? Right. ABC. <laughs> easy as BAC. Um, <laughs> But it was it was fascinating just um, to see like all the stuff that they put you through to because they're not actually looking for you to do the uh, alphabet backwards. What they're gonna be like, hey, we need to do the alphabet backwards, and most people will be like, fuck, I can't even do that sober. And you're like, oh, really? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> so they're they're kind of trip you up a little bit. So I'm curious if that's easier than than using a breathalyzer. I feel like can they be that off on the calibration? I mean. Who knows? Because yeah. I know, like the whole like stand on your leg thing. The whole point of it is to see if you catch yourself. They don't care if you fall. They care if you try and catch yourself. Yeah. A lot of people who are drunk don't put their other leg back out to catch themselves. No kidding. I I had no idea. Yeah, they're just trying there to you trick go. you. They're not trying to do the. Uh, it's like all smoke and mirrors. Like look here, and then you yeah. have to do something else. So wow, I, I had no idea about that. Now you know. And knowing yeah. is half the battle. That's right. <laughs> G.I. Joe. I'm a winner you know. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Similar to, to Sandra's story, I was at a uh, Padres game, San Diego. They had done a, a beer festival before the game, which I highly partook in. Best stadium in MLB because of that oh. reason, like shit like that. 100%. Of all the ones I've been to, it's my favorite. And I'm not a Padres fan, but definitely my favorite stadium. Uh, did the did the beer fest, went in, had a few more beers, keep the buzz going. And as we're leaving, there were cops outside, like, come check your, your BAC. Like, they do a breathalyzer on you, like, voluntarily to, you know, tell you where you were. Go over so here behind this home. fence. We'll check your BAC. No big yeah. deal, man. <laughs> Put your keys into the ignition. We're going to test your BAC. And so, like, my wife's like, let's do it. I was like, yeah, I don't care. I, I was like, I'm buzzed. I'm probably not going to pass. And she's like, okay, let's try it. She's like, well, and they ask you before, like, what do you think? And my wife's like, I think I'm right on the border. I think I could legally drive. And so she did it and she was right. She was right at one or right at uh, zero eight. She was, she was right on the border and, and probably could have given herself five minutes and a glass of water and been okay. Well done, home. Mrs. Tug. Yeah. And I was like, wow. I'm probably a little over. I'm probably at like a one Oh, like, I don't think I'm drunk, but I definitely got a nice buzz going. And I, did, I was like at a two Oh <laughs> <laughs> guys like one Oh, huh? and I was like, eh. <laughs> that sounds beers. like somebody who thought they were at one Oh, <laughs> yeah. if I believe it, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> right, I believe in you, Peter. So uh, that was that was good times. Uh, we'll we'll end it on this one. Booze was arrested for booze. It was fitting having Wiley on. Happens. Uh, a motorist named Booze was arrested for drunk driving. A Florida woman. Hey, Florida. Florida hey, man. Vanessa. Florida man. Yeah. Hi, Vanessa. We haven't had a Florida story in a while. Sorry, Vanessa, but this one's for you. <laughs> a Florida woman named Booze was arrested for drunk driving after allegedly slamming her car into a Taco Bell sign and then fleeing the scene. According to an arrest report, booze, which is just so great to say, struck a tree, <laughs> the Taco Bell sign, and then the eatery's water meter around 10.20 p.m. It wasn't even late. She's already running into shit. She was subsequently collared after being spotted speeding through two red lights near the restaurant. Is coll collared, is that like arrested? Is that Yeah, that's, a, that's uh, no, that's um, 1940s speak. Uh, I got that guy collared now. He was, you know, like, it's like old school, like film noir shit that they collared oh, somebody God. means that they, they captured the criminal. So what you're saying is the booze was collared. Yeah, the booze was collared, see? Yeah, <laughs> Down in Florida, see? Yeah, it's a booze. It's a booze broad, see? Mm, what to talk about, you see? <laughs> uh, when questioned by police, a wobbly booze exhibited bloodshot, watery eyes, a dazed and blank expression on her face. And an odor of an alcoholic beverage on her breath. Booz's rap sheet includes seven separate convictions for driving without a license. She has also been convicted of marijuana possession and grand theft. Oh, she's a winner. Grand. See, I think theft. she's a, she's a loser because here's my my thought process is 
if you're going to get charged with all this stuff, at least go into the Taco Bell and get yourself some Taco Bell first. <laughs> she never did get her like, you know, chalupa. So that's no. a, it's more of a tragedy drive, in this story. You're going to drive into a Taco Bell sign. You know you're going to get caught. Just get yeah. some food <laughs> and then get, get that caught. Crunch Wrap Supreme. Yeah. You're like, officer, I'm going to give you a minute, but I got to finish my Bell Beefer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I got some business to handle. Maybe they put chicken burritos back on the dollar menu. You know, like Maybe. she'll never know. She will never know. When I get arrested for a DUI, I want to be fully enraged in TNS. Please. Please. No, anyway. What's TNS? Taco neck syndrome. Oh, okay. There we go. Remember the really stupid Taco Bell commercials that Shaq was in and you like you had to tilt your head to the oh, side to eat the yeah. taco? Yeah. They call it TNS. Wow, that that is an obscure reference. That was some 90s. That was a deep pull. I don't know why that just came to me. You just it brought in Taco, the, Shack. Mm, Taco Shack. It brings Shack. full circle with, you know, the basketball theme at the the, the beginning. And, that. You're right. You know, down with Doc Rivers. and Yeah, fuck Doc Rivers. Sounds like Super Dave Osborne. Is that your is that your Shaq impersonation? No, it's my Doc Rivers impersonation. Oh, okay. I, I, okay, that's better. He sounds like Super Dave. <laughs> he does, I guess. I, I, For the you three people it? who knows who that is. I know who Super Dave is. Thank you. Was it Lex? was it Wendy's? He was doing. A, who was he um, doing uh, commercials for? I don't remember. I just remember on David Letterman back in the day. Oh no, he actually did uh, fast food. Um, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I don't remember. It was Super Dave Osborne, right? Yeah, yeah. Super Dave Osborne. Yeah, my, my yeah, dad but... always watched Letterman, so I I very much knew who Super Dave Osborne was. Kind of the only part of Letterman I enjoyed as a kid. I enjoyed yeah. the space between his teeth. <laughs> that was a lot of enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure for me it was just the uh that's <laughs> <laughs> true that's dave right there <laughs> uh before we wrap things up wiley why don't you uh go ahead and plug yourself whoa hey wait, just you in know case what you have whoa, already easy sorry anyways yeah follow us <laughs> on uh we do uh you can follow us on boozeleague.com uh we have a whole shop up there and everything else we also for all the booze cast uh, episodes that we do we do have a page for every one of those you can find us on uh, spotify iheart itunes wherever you follow your podcast wherever you follow this one yeah uh go ahead and hit subscribe to us the booze cast yeah, if you're in phoenix and you know where we are you can find the booze cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have a uh you can go to phoenix.boozeleague.com for special uh, phoenix arizona related content uh, how about how about like a a ten percent off code for those in Phoenix? Yeah, the, the <laughs> Phoenix rules will get you twenty five percent off as long as we're s- sending to do it Phoenix. Do that code. Um, oh, that would be amazing. You can also find us on uh, Instagram at Booze League, Twitter at Booze League, and of course Facebook dot com forward slash Booze League. And also keep an eye out for us because when fall comes around, we always have a rivalry with the Unfiltered Gentlemen on a number of sports sports and balls and things so mm-hmm. yeah we get uh competitive when the balls come out yeah would you say you get balls deep one would say that uh close i say about yeah. half balls deep <laughs> oh. more like balls shallow really is where i'm at quarter balls deep quarter balls yeah there you go <laughs> well said well said by flex uh thank you for joining us thanks for for hanging and out I'll, yeah shout out to you guys unfiltered gentlemen thank you so much for having us on i really appreciate it and thank you for having coley on so much love having coley on she rules one of the best people you could know right on coley she i say it every week she's the star of the booze cast <laughs> hey you know what like uh as the star of the booze cast i'm just kidding uh no i actually <laughs> i actually do agree with that dude coley rules she's awesome yeah, so go uh, go listen to Coley and her sidekick Wiley and uh, Sancho. <laughs> and Sancho, yeah, our, our little pet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com, the unfiltered gentleman on the socials, flex at flex me a beer with underscores in between. Not to be confused with just at flex. That is not where you find him. I sincerely apologize. Yeah, don't go pad that account. Yeah. <laughs> Don't absorb it too much. Uh, (laughs) Thanks to Wendy for my beer this week. And uh, once again, hi, Vanessa. I hope everyone is staying very well hydrated. Oh, 80553 at beer. Drunk dials and texts and all that good stuff. Hope you're all staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. (laughs) 